Howdy, everybody. Steve here, KM9G. On last night's, last night's, on last Monday's Ham Nuggets, I guess it wouldn't even be last Monday by the time you guys are watching this, on a Ham Nuggets live stream a long time ago in the distant past, the far, far distant past, we talked about the Vero N7600 radio, as well as, just lost my light, first world problems. All right, as I was saying before gravity interrupted me, the Vero VRN76 radio was the other one that we talked about. And then these radios have all kinds of cousins. BTEC makes one, uh, they call it the UV Pro. They also have a GMRS version, they call it the GMRS Pro, GMRS 50 Pro or something like that. Radiodity has one of these handhelds, they call it the GA5WB. And then Vero has the 7500, the 7600, the 75, and the 76. The 75 being a GMRS and the 76 being a two meter, 70 centimeter ham radio. And one of the questions that came up was, what's the difference between the 7500, the previous generation, and the 7600, the current generation of the mobiles? And I didn't know 100% because a lot of the stuff actually does transfer over between the two of them. So I reached out to my representative, my vendor rep, my salesperson, Kathy. Kathy's awesome. And uh, she gave me this handy dandy chart. Let's go take a look at it. We're going to show you the differences between the 7600 and the 7500. 76 on the left, 75, the older model on the right. The 7600 has expanded frequency reception. And we'll talk a little bit about transmit as well. They both are dual band. Uh, 2 meter and 70 centimeter, 144 to 148, 144 to 148, 430 to 440, etc. Both of them do the same thing. The 7600 opens up receive to additional bands, 136 to 225, 300 to 400, and 400 to 550. The 7600 has a really easy open transmit mod. I'll show you that in a future video because I want to go forward and backward and do some testing and power output and so forth. Be sure you're subscribed to see that. In some cases, it's legal. In some cases, it's not. So as an example, as a licensed ham radio operator, it is legal for me to take this ham radio or any other radio and put it onto a frequency in the ham space. And then I am responsible, my license is on the line for making sure that it doesn't produce any spurious emissions. And there's pretty straightforward, easy ways to make that happen. In the case of this being a ham radio, once I get it to transmit from known ham bands to ham bands that it's not, I can still go backwards. If I was to modify this to go on to GMRS, which you can do, it is technically illegal to transmit on GMRS. But it's a straightforward, simple, easy unlock in order to get these extra frequencies. The 7500, can't do it. Best I've been told. But we'll try it. If somebody wants to get me a 7500, I will see how it works out. The 7600 has AM aviation reception. The 7500 does not. They both receive FM radio. The 7600 has a new and updated microphone. They're both pretty useful, pretty decent microphones. This one has a couple of extra buttons, but this one has a color screen on it. And with that screen on the microphone, you can actually program the radio straight from the keypad. I've already got a video on doing that. I will link it in the description down below. And it gets the job done. It's not it's not easy to do, but it does get the job done in terms of very quickly needing to do something and still having this accessible However, where both of these radios shine is that they have a smartphone app that you can run on your iPhone or on your Android, and then everything is accessible as well as easy to type on with a QWERTY keyboard and mapping and positioning on the maps and so on. So the application on your cell phone, on your smartphone is what really sets these radios apart from pretty much every other radio on the market. Hopefully everybody else will start playing catch up and we'll get some real advancement in ham radio here soon. So built-in GPS, uh, yes, the 7600 has its own internal GPS sensor. The 7500 does not, but it will rely on your smartphone's GPS to, to make that up, to make that happen. So as an example, I can have my 7600 set up as an APRS beacon and it will beacon my position, it'll beacon its own position, and it doesn't need to be near my smartphone, and I don't need to have an additional smartphone in order to make it work. With the 7500, I need that smartphone in order to get that GPS capability. AI noise reduction on transmit and on receive is a feature you get with the 76. I'll be doing a video demonstrating how well that works. It is not available on the 7500. Built-in electronic compass sensor, nice. Built-in gyroscope sensor, nice. I don't know what we currently have in ham radio that uses that, but I like having access to new technologies that we can do things with in ham radio. So we can get some telemetry back. So maybe there might be some way to expose this data and send it out as an APRS beacon. And when I go, you know, four by fouring, off-roading, overlanding, whatever you want to call it, 
I'll be able to tell my tilt angles and I'll be able to tell my compass heading. And then I'll also be able to point out, you know, put points on a map as to where I'm going with the GPR, with the GPS. I always want to say GPRS with the GPS via APRS. The output power on the 7600 is 50 watts, 50 watts. And on the 7500, it is 40 watts on UHF and 50 watts on VHF. I was gonna say UHF again. A lot of your dual band radios put out lower power on UHF, so it's kind of normal to do that, and Vero has fixed it on the 7600 so that it is 50-50 instead of 40-50. Full-featured app control. Both of them have full-featured app control. There is actually an application that even extends that. Someone found out the protocol and made a handy-dandy app, and we're gonna test that in a future video as well. APRS, built-in GPS, operates independently, and then on the 7500, it operates via the smartphone. Bluetooth PTT capable, both of them, yes. Bluetooth speaker mic compatible, both of them, yes with the 79 and with the 88. So there is a picture of the 79 and there is, there was, well, I guess we don't get to see that. There's the 75 microphone. I need to see this 88. This is the 78 and I, I, I kind of want one of these. I don't know if it's compatible with it. It says, it says 88, which might be a typo because I'm not seeing a 88 model. Yeah, I think that's a typo. I think they mean the BHM 78 is what they're compatible with. And both of them are compatible with that one. Panel USB port. So the 7600 has a USB port on the front of it, which puts out five volts. So I guess you can use it to, I don't know what the amperage is, but I guess you might be able to use it to charge a cell phone or something because uh, you don't need it for firmware updates. So I'm not sure what it's there for yet, but we will find out and we'll make a video on that too. Frequency sync rapid scan, page 22. Yes, I have a lot of tabs open. Don't judge me. Sync mode, choose sync from the function menu. Isolates frequency scan, transmitter begins automatic signal emission, screen displays dynamic frequency scan, sync completion. When frequency stops flashing, screen locks onto detected frequency, simultaneously displays match tone parameters. Aha! This frequency sync rapid scan is for you to discover like a local repeater that you can hear, but for some reason your tones aren't working or you can't transmit on it or something along those lines, I guess. But it will enable me to lock onto your signal when you are transmitting without me having to fumble the dial myself. So it automatically synchronizes my frequency on my radio with your frequency that you're transmitting on on your radio or one that's transmitting nearby. It's kind of like scanning, but instead of scanning, stopping for a second and then going, it scans and then programs the radio with the tones that it hears and the frequency that it's on. Wireless bulk channel data copy. You can synchronize the radios back and forth between each other. I've got a video that demonstrates that on the 76 handhelds, but it's the same procedure, I'm sure, because it's the same company. Why wouldn't they do it that way? This isn't Yezu after all. They both do firmware upgrades. Firmware upgrade process is really super simple on this. Go into the smartphone app, hit the firmware upgrade button, walks you through the process. You don't need to, it's actually wireless. Odd that something in a wireless hobby is wireless, right? FCC and CE compliant, okay. So there are the differences and the similarities between the 7500 and the 7600. Real quick, a couple of other things that we found out is that is that the 7600 uses an eight pin aircraft style connector and we found an extension cord for it. So I'll leave a link for that as well as a link for the radios that I mentioned down in the description below. Some of them have discounts like the one from Vero and the one from Radiotity. And then some of them you can get on Amazon some of you, some of them you can even get in fancy flashy colors like this red one. My precious. Hopefully this gives you enough information to make a purchasing decision whether you get a used 7500, a new 7500, or a 7600. Any of these features stand out to you as a good buying reason to get the new one? For me, I just want to get the new one because no, I like new things. But I think the new one's going to be supported a little bit longer than the old one because that's kind of the way product life cycles work. If you want to know all the latest and greatest in radios and their similarities and their differences, then this is the channel for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, but it makes me happy. I like seeing that number go up. It tells the world that ham radio is awesome. And if you don't like ham radio, then there's a video right over here that you don't want to watch next that has got even more ham radio stuff in it. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.